guys so here is my cat kobu i know some of you guys were asking about him this is him he's not happy <laughs> okay just wanted to show you guys all right so let's start with our lesson okay so today we are going to be learning about probability and independent events Okay, so just to review again, what is probability? Probability is a number that shows how likely an event will occur. Um, and we know there's three ways to show um, probability. We got percentage, which is 40. Um, we have decimal, and we also have fraction. Okay, so these are all equivalent. Okay, so last year we learned this big word, and we, call, we, we talked about having um, finding theoretical probability. Okay, and that's what we did yesterday and the day before that. So theoretical probability is just reasoning, meaning we it's it's um, in theory, we are calculating what's gonna happen. It's not really um, happening, we're just thinking what is expected. Okay, so that's theoretical, it's our reasoning. Versus experimental probability, we are actually conducting experiments. So that's what you guys are gonna be doing next week where you'll first solve for your theoretical probability and then you're going to make an experimental probability meaning you will be rolling the dice or you will be flipping the coins okay so just really quickly um, we're going to just be working today and tomorrow using dice okay so dice one and dice two is what we're going to just be labeling our dice okay so before we even start we just have to figure out what our denominator is going to be just solving for all these problems. Um, and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. So we have dice one and dice two. We're gonna think how many total outcomes we can have just flipping our dice over and over again. So let's pretend it lands on one and then it lands on one. Lands on one for dice one and two for dice two. Okay, so one and three, one and four, one and five, one and six. Okay, so this is an example. Okay, so we know just for the first round we have six outcomes. Then I'm gonna do it again, and I'm gonna think, okay, this is two, and it's gonna land on one. It's gonna land on two, and then land on two. And so we're just gonna keep on going, finishing dice one all in the category of two. Okay, so that's six outcomes. And if we keep on going all the way until we have six as our dice one, we know that if there's six here, six here, and six here, and there's six faces in total, all you have to do is do six times six, and our total possibilities is 36. Okay, do you see how I did that? I can actually just go and do four, one, four, two, four, three, but this is just cutting it short. Just multiplying how many faces times this, and that's our total, okay? So if we were working with three dice, we would go six times six times six, which is to 16. Okay, so that's how many possibilities we would have. I'm just showing you guys um, just how we got 36 as our denominator. Okay, hope that made sense. Okay, so let's move on to some examples. So you have two dice and want to conduct an experiment. Before you do so, you must calculate the theoretical probabilities for each question. So first, let's begin. What, and reminding you, our denominator is 36. So what is the probability of rolling two fives? So let's look at it again. Our formula is favorable outcomes over possible outcomes. So our event is two fives, and we just have to think first, how many times can we roll two fives? So let's look at dice one and dice two. Let's see here in the corner right here. So I can roll dice one five and dice two five. There are no other options. So that is just one possibility. Okay, so our fraction is one over 36. And just refer to the other video um, posted on Monday, just how to find the percent and decimal of this, okay? All right, so let's look at number two. Oh, again, so your homework today is gonna have more options. You're gonna have either 50% or um, in a decimal form. So for example, if our answer is 136, oh, one over 36, it's here. But if, it, if it's not found here, then you have to calculate what the percent and decimal is, okay? All right, so let's look at number two. What is the probability of rolling a sum of four? So let's look at our decimal. We know that our, our uh, I'm sorry, our fraction, we know our, de our denominator is 36. So what numbers can I do, can I add together to get four? Okay, so let's look at dice one. Let's start with one, because one's always easiest. One plus what equals four? So I can get three. 
So when you have two numbers that are different, you will always have two possibilities because we have one and three, and then if you switch, so this is one and this one's three, and then if you flip it again, this could be three, and this could be one, so that's two possibilities, okay? So what else can get four? Um, two plus two can get four. And we know this only has one possibility because it's the same number. So let's count our total. We have one, two, three, we have three possibilities. So let's reduce our fraction by three. Our total is one twelfth. That's our probability to get the sum of four, okay? So let's try another example. Um, what is the probability of rolling a product of 12? So here's our fraction. We have a probability of 12. Our denominator is 36. So product means multiply. All right, so what times what equals 12? Let's start with 1. 1 times our biggest number is 6. So 1 times 6 is 6. So we know 1 is not going to work. Or 6. Okay, let's move on to 2. 2 times what can get 12? 2 times 6, so that works, so we can have two possibilities, 6 and 2. Okay, so let's move on to 3. Can 3 work? Yes, 3 times 4 equals 12. So again, that's another two, that's two possibilities, so 4 and 3. Let's move on to 5. 5 is not going to work, and we know 6 doesn't work. So let's count how many possibilities. 1, 2, 3, 4. So our answer is... We have four possibilities, so our fraction is 4 over 36, which we will reduce by 4, which equals 1 ninth. And there you go, guys. That is how you find it. Let's do one last one. This is a different scenario. You bought 15 hoodies for your friends. Five hoodies are black, seven are gray, and three are blue. The question is, what is the probability of one friend choosing a blue hoodie? So let's look at our event. We're looking for a blue hoodie. We know that there are three hoodies. So 3 over 15, let's reduce our fraction, it equals 1 fifth. And that's all. So again, review the video um, from before just to find out the percent and fraction. Um, the percent, you just divide 1 by 5, and then for decimal, once you find your um, fraction, you can find your decimal. Okay, so another reminder, guys, when doing your work, you want to always show it. Again, this is not how work is supposed to look. You want to make sure you're being organized and you're showing me how to solve for percents and also for your decimals. Okay, so your link for today is your Nelson link. It says Nelson link here, but you have a worksheet. So um, for Wednesday, you guys have this. Um, yeah, so this is the problems that we did, just different numbers. And I changed just like from socks to hoodies. And experimental probability is right here, okay? And then as for Thursday, you guys have this, um, uh, let's see, this worksheet here that I'm going to post on Thursday. It's just the same exact thing that we did in our video today. If you rolled <coughs> two, a two-sided die, um, what, was it, what would be the sum of six? Um, of 9 and the sum of 8, so what is the probability for that? Then you're going to do it in fraction form and then also in uh, percentage and decimal form. Okay, guys, so that is all I have for today. Message me if you have any questions or need help, and I will always be here to help you. Okay, bye, guys.